Have you ever wondered what a software engineer or a web developer does? Well, today is your lucky day. In today's video, we will interview Mr. Adam Davis, who is a software engineer and a web developer. We will explore what he does for his job and we'll even learn some cool things he has been able to do using his technical skills. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to my channel and like all my videos. Also, remember to share my channel with your family and friends. Now, let's get started. Hello, Mr. Adam. Welcome to STEMAGEAR. I really appreciate that you took the time out of your day to be here. I know that you're a software engineer and a web developer. Can you start by explaining briefly what a software engineer is? Yeah, so um, it's actually not too easy to explain. I always have a hard time explaining this to friends and family, but um, essentially what I'm doing is I'm a programmer. So I know how to, um, I know how to write languages that computers are able to understand. So I write a set of instructions for the computer to follow. And, um, and as I build those instructions larger and larger um, to do one specific task or multiple tasks, um, that's called software. And so as a software engineer, what I do is um, I create these um, solution problem solvers, I guess, um, with computers and, uh, and I just kind of like architect those, um, the, I, the software, I, I don't not really sure how else to, what else to call it, um, that solves those issues. So now that we you, you have explained what a software engineer is, can you go a little bit deeper and explain what a web developer is? Yeah, so similar to uh, what a software engineer does, a web developer is sort of just like a branch of that. Um, and they specifically develop software for um, anything that would be on the internet. So there are these things called uh, single page applications. So if you've ever used like Google Drive or even Facebook, um, um, it, now what you're able to do is like you can just be on one web page and navigate through all these different views and um, different like sort of mini apps within your website. And that is all done um, through web development. Um, and I guess uh, what, a, what a developer does is like if you have a company that needs a website and it's just um, just a normal website that has like pictures of the company and like how to contact them. A web developer can do something like that um, or maybe something a little bit more advanced where it actually is a, a web application that would work um, just like a mobile app would, but it, it's displayed on uh, in, inside of a web browser. So like Google Chrome or Firefox. And um, so a web developer uses technologies like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to um, create the styles of the website to make it look really nice. And, um, and then they also do the functionality with JavaScript to, to make it work like an actual program, like software. Um, so a web developer can kind of branch into one of three areas. Um, there's the front end, the back end, and then full stack, which is doing front and back end um, as, as a job, which is, it's a lot, it's a lot to handle, but um, I can just briefly explain what those are. So the front end of a website is everything that the user is going to see when they land on the website. So all of the colors, all of like the, the boxes and images, all of that is laid out and put there by the front end engineer. Um, and so they're really responsible for like, if the, uh, if the user is on your website and they're just having a hard time navigating around, like they want to contact you, but they can't find the contact button. It's not where they are used to it being on other websites. Um, so that all of that stuff is what a front end engineer is concerned about, just the ease of use. Um, and then the back end engineer uh, deals with data. So if the 
if the user is like typing in their email and their name and they're sending it into like a web form, for example, a uh, backend engineer would take that submission data and then they would pull it from the front end into the back end and then handle it. And then they can send it to a server, to a database. Um, and then at any point, if the front end needs that information, like they want to display the user's name somewhere on the website, um, then they can pull from the back end and, uh, and display it up on the front end for the user to see. Um, and then, like I said, full stack is just any person who does both of those things at the same time. Um, and it, it takes a while to get to that point. If you're, uh, if you're starting out with front end, you can do that for a while and do only that if you want. Um, and then transition to back end, or you can do vice versa. If you're really interested in data and data science, then you can do that first. And then if you if you want to make it look pretty and make it you know nice for the user to actually experience, um, then you can kind of transition that way. And that's what I did. I started on the front end, um, just creating user interfaces and and making things really nice. And then now at the job that I have currently, um, I've been doing a lot of back end and it's super fun. Well, that sounds really cool. I know you do work with web user interfaces. Can you explain a little bit what a user interface is and why is it important? Sure. So, yeah, user interface is usually, um, it comes about through a, uh, a person who is a web designer. And what they would do is they create a mock-up in something like um, like Adobe. Uh, I'm not familiar with the Adobe products, but it might be Illustrator or um, something like that. But they would create a mock-up where it looks just like how the website would look, um, but it's just it's just images. And then they would send that over to the front-end engineer, the um, the, just the web developer and they would take that design and code it out so that it looked exactly like that but it would actually perform on a website uh, as a website so um user interfaces are basically just that it's um it's the the colors and the layout and the design the composition of a website so that you know i don't know if you've ever seen a bad website before but you'll go to it and it's just <laughs> It looks hard to look at. The colors are either too bright or too dim and things are hard to see. And everything sometimes is like crunched into one area and then, <laughs> yeah. you know, and so that would be bad web design. And so a good web designer knows how to design the composition of a website so that it's like, wow, I, I enjoy being on this site. I want to stay here longer and actually read what what's here. Um, and then, uh, and all of that stuff is is user interface design. Um, I'm super into this stuff. I love user interface design. It's really fun, like just reading blogs about it. And um, it's really cool. Like it, it kind of gets into psychology, like what makes people happy to look at. And, um, you know, even like you have a box on, on the screen, if it has really sharp edges, it's a lot harder to look at than if you just curve those edges a little bit. So just tiny little details like that um, really make a difference. Another important part of your job is software testing. Can you explain what software testing is and why it's so necessary? Yeah, so <laughs> this is something that I have recently been getting into. Um, so when I was a freelance developer, so I just worked for myself. Um, I didn't do this a whole lot because I was completely in charge of all of the code that I wrote. So I knew where everything was. I kept everything um, controlled. Um, and it, because it was just me, I didn't have to worry about some other developer coming in, changing my code, and then me not knowing what's going on. Mm -hmm. Um, but now at a, a company with other developers, um, I have uh, I have learned how to do testing, which is like if you if you write an algorithm that does this, it takes in some data and then it does a bunch of transitions and then it outputs some uh, the same data but changed. Um, you want to make sure that weeks down the road, months, years down the road. Um, when maybe other people are working at the company or someone else is is adding on to the software um, i mean what happens if their code that they just wrote 
totally works for what for what they wrote it for but it now breaks that thing that you wrote a, a while ago and you have mm. no idea why all of a sudden there's this giant piece of the website that isn't working and, and no one knows why and so that's why testing is important because what you do is you write another piece of code another algorithm which will test to make sure that your code that you wrote um today let's say um it it checks out perfectly. Like it, it'll run a bunch of different test cases and, it, and they'll all come back with green check marks. And if that's true, then you know it's good. And then later, if down the road, when you are you know, changing things, if all of a sudden that breaks that part, then you'll get error messages saying um, specifically what happened and what broke and why. And that makes it so it's like, oh, the thing that I just made just now just totally changed that thing that I wrote weeks ago. And so I need to go back and, and make sure that this all works together. Um, and like I said, that's super important when you're working with other developers because they don't necessarily know all the code you write. They don't, they're not reading everything that you've ever written. <laughs> so when they write something, they just, they just want to be able to, you know, press the, the commit button on Git, which is just a versioning control system. So like they would, you know, push their code up to the main code base. And then as long as the testing um, that you wrote checks out, then you're good to go. You don't have any worries. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really important that when you're software testing that making sure everything works. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so what does it take to become a software developer or a web developer? For example, are there any classes that are important to take or are there any subjects that you need to be good at? What kind of degrees or background do you need? Well, um, interestingly, you don't need any degrees uh, at all. So I don't have a degree <laughs> and um, it's actually really nice. Um, I, I did go to college for a while um, and I was going for business and marketing, uh, which I thought I was really interested in, but always like in the back of my mind, I knew I was interested in computers and tech. So um, after I left school, I had to figure out like what it is that I want to do. Um, so how I ended up getting into web development was just, um, I knew that I wanted to write code. I wanted to write software. So I just started with the the fundamentals and that's what i would recommend to anyone like just learn what the learn the fundamentals of programming so um pick really any language as long as it's relatively new um, i wouldn't recommend something like uh kotlin or <laughs> something that like no one really uses so much anymore but <laughs> Um, but, you know, JavaScript, Python, uh, C++, uh, any of those um, will work just fine. And um, just kind of like get into it by being self-taught, even just finding people like if you know a family member who knows how to code, just kind of ask them questions. And um, the biggest thing, the biggest answer to your question you just asked me is um, what it takes to be a developer of any kind, web or um you know, an AI developer, anything would be to be comfortable with being self-taught and to always be learning. So if you, if you want to get into a field where like you go to college, you learn what you need to learn, and then you just, you go to work and you've already learned everything you need and you never have to learn again, then this is not the profession for you at all. Um, this is, this is like for people who they love to learn anytime they have a question about like how something works, they immediately look it up or they take it apart and they learn how, how it works. Um, for people who are really curious, um, people who just love computers, technology, um, how everything is connected and you can, you know, create multiple databases that all connect with each other and they can talk. And if, if that kind of stuff is exciting to you, then definitely check out um, software development in general, but maybe web development you might be interested in um, because it's it's extremely fun. It's a very artistic field. There's a lot of um, creativity in it. It's not so like strict. It's not all about math. You don't have to be good at math at all to do this. <laughs> I, I, I think the highest level of math I ever reached was like 
algebra two, and even that was a real struggle. Um, but through learning the program, I learned all of the same stuff that you would learn in algebra, like the logic and the reasoning and uh, handling like things that equal each other, um, logical operators, all of those things you learn through programming. Um, and so, I mean, as long as you are relatively smart, if you, if you care about asking questions and really getting the answer and, and understanding things, um, then yeah, you have, definitely have what it takes for sure. That sounds pretty cool how you can be a software developer, developer or a web developer just by just be being curious, right? Uh, mm -hmm. If you're being curious, you can learn many things you want, like how parts work, as you mentioned. Finally, can you share with us any cool facts about being a software developer or a web developer or any cool projects you may have worked on before? Um, well, some cool things about being a developer, like the reasons why I like being a developer is that um, I am always coming up with these ideas of things that I wish I could have, but I don't necessarily want to buy or maybe they don't exist yet. So some of the things I'm interested in is like the um, IoT or Internet of Things um, world, which is like having, you know, uh, an app on your smartphone where you can tap a button and like three or four different light bulbs in your room turn on at the same time or like uh you know you walk up to your house and it immediately knows that you are you you've arrived home and then it unlocks all your doors for you things like that all of those things are now uh able to be made by me like as long as you know how to just do basic programming um and you're curious and you, you really want to learn how this stuff works um I mean, you can make this stuff pretty easily. Um, so like one of the things that I'm working on right now that I'm <clears throat> almost have uh, complete or else I could show you right now um, is I built out a very small mobile website for, for smartphones where um, it just has like a little picture on the top and then um, my name. And then under that is a bunch of different uh, like cards um, I guess more like buttons and each one it'll say like um you know linkedin uh um trying to think of what the other ones are just like my personal website um i have a link to my bookshelf website which just has a bunch of books that i'm reading um and then like a contact section just like you know different links um and that's that's really all it is and why it's cool is because it works as like a digital business card and so i have some nfc tags coming in the mail that should be here tomorrow by the end of the day and they're really tiny um they're about 12 millimeter width and so i'll be able to stick them uh, or at least one of them inside of my watch and then if anyone if they want to know how to contact me or they want to see my website or whatever um, they can just tap the top of their phone right on my watch and then my website will pull up on their phone. Mm -hmm. And so instead of having to hand people a business card and then they have to go to my website and see all that stuff, um, they can just tap and it's right there. So just like little things like that, just that make your life easier. Um, it's, it's really cool to be able to like, you know, I just had the idea and within a couple days I had it made. Um, so yeah, it's just a, it's just fun if you have a lot of cool ideas and, and you love learning and building things. We really appreciate Mr. Adam's time and expertise. Hopefully you learn a few things about software and web development. Thanks for joining me in the STEM Adventure. Adventure. Please remember to drop a like and share this video and my channel with your family and friends. I'll see you soon in the next video. Thanks for watching.